What's the old saying? The worst day on a picnic is better than the best day at work? Well, something like that. Well, to make the day even better, you need the perfect picnic table. <laughs> I like this one because it reminds me of a farm table. It brings back some really cool memories. Now, of course, you're not limited to picnics with this table either. It's also the perfect spot to do homework, to read, or uh, to do nothing at all. Uh, let's start by talking about the leg units. First of all, the plans call for a 2x4 here up on the apron and a 4x4 stretcher down here near the bottom. Well, instead of going with a 4x4, I actually took a scrap piece of 2x8, cut reasonably close to a 2x4 out of the top here, and then what, uh, whatever was left, I used for the stretcher along the bottom. Uh, I also did a lot of resawing uh, on the rest of the parts of this project which again, really makes the grain stand out and it's a great way to reuse some of your scraps. It's really nothing more than just changing the dimensionality of the wood. In other words, uh, instead of uh, this being a four x four, which it isn't really, it's more of a three and a half by three and a half, we're going to change it into a three and a quarter by three and a quarter. Uh, so what this does for us in this case is it really gets rid of any surface imperfections and it makes that grain really kind of pop. And, you'll be amazed at how this really comes out looking like fine furniture once we apply that stain to it. So uh, with, this, uh, with this particular step, make sure you're wearing a, number one, a dust mask, number two, your safety glasses, and make sure you have a good dust extraction system because it's really key. You're gonna kick up a lot of dust on this step. To begin, I cut four lengths of four by four to 28 inches long. To resaw them, I first set the fence at three and three eighths inches and made a pass on two adjacent sides turning the board over each time to cover the entire face of each side. Then I adjusted the fence down to three and a quarter inches and resawed the remaining two sides. As a finishing touch, I used the trim router and a roundover bit to soften the edges of the legs. For the apron and stretcher, I set the fence so that the saw blade would just barely clean off the edge of my two by eight, giving me a nice smooth straight edge to use for the rest of my cuts. I cut the apron at three and a quarter inches wide by 18 inches long. The remainder of the 2x8 became the stretcher, which measured out at about 4 inches wide. I used the palm sander to smooth the faces of each. Let's talk about a couple of things before we put it all together, shall we? Uh, number one, we're going to soften the edges of the apron and the stretcher. I'm only going to soften the bottom two edges of the apron, though, because the, uh, the other side will obviously be butted against the bottom of the top of the table. We didn't see those. Uh, now, on the stretcher itself, I'm going to soften all four edges since they'll all be visible. And I need to drill a hole in the center of this stretcher for the dowel that will uh, act as sort of a footrest there along the bottom of the table. All right, and we have to talk about our joinery method. Now, the plans call for doweled joints. It's a very strong joint, but a very visible joint. I went 180 deg uh, 80 degrees off. I'm such a rebel. These are almost invisible joints. These are pocket holes. You don't even see them until I turn it over, and then you can see all of these pocket holes. You usually use a lot in cabinet making and fine furniture. Decided to go this route because, well, because I wanted to. If you've never used pocket holes, you're gonna love this. Pocket holes are created using a tool like this from Craig Jig. The concept is simple. A piece of wood is clamped into the jig. Then a special step drill bit is used to create a countersink hole for the screw to sit in. We'll start by drilling pocket holes on both ends of the apron. Next, we need to drill a hole in the center of the stretcher to accommodate our dowel. Use a Forstner bit the same size as your dowel to drill completely through the stretcher. Finally, soften the edges of the stretcher with a roundover bit. All right, now it looks like a big pile of wood right now, but watch as it is magically transformed into one of the ends of our picnic table. These little uh, extra blocks of wood, these are just spacers. And what I, I put them underneath both the apron here at the top and the stretcher at the bottom or toward the bottom so that they're not flush with either side of the leg. Our six inch block right here, this is so we don't have to measure each time to find out how far our stretcher is from the bottom. I'm putting it six inches from the bottom of each leg. Use clamps to hold each end assembly together and then install pocket hole screws into each of the eight holes you drilled.
All right, our two ends will be connected by the aprons. These are the uh, long aprons, 40 inches long each. Gives one of our nice rounded edges there. Pocket holes in just the right spots. We'll talk about those measurements in a second. And remember, this can be as simple as a two by four, or it can be a two by six, like I found in my shop, a scrap that I ripped down to the, to the right size and, and sanded it down all nice and smooth. Cleaning out that corner of the shop and loving every minute of it. I marked and drilled pocket holes on each apron at the following locations. Four inches from the end, 10 inches from the end, and 16 inches from the end. Then I made the same measurements starting from the other end. I also drilled two pocket holes at each end to connect the legs. The next step is to connect the aprons to the end leg assemblies. Okay, this is just a center support I decided to add at the last minute simply because I just thought the top needed a little extra support, especially in the middle since we're running the plank uh, planks long ways. Just keeps it from bouncing so much. Again, completely optional. It's not on the original plan, so it's up to you. It's just a scrap piece of lumber with some pocket holes at either end to uh, screw into the uh, aprons. All right, speaking of the top, let's talk about how we put that together. The top is pretty simple. It's made of three pieces of pressure treated southern pine, a 2x8 surrounded on either side by 2x12s. All three are 59 and a half inches long. Now, I looked for boards that were reasonably free of knots and major imperfections, but I still wanted the top to have some character. Just decide which side you'd like to see most of the time and mark that as the top. At this stage of the game, what I've done is taken all the tabletop pieces, turn them upside down on the workbench, put the base of the table on top of that, and then use this 4x4 and a couple of clamps to smush it all together. That's a technical term. What we have to do in this step is to, number one, attach all of the boards to the apron with our pocket holes and the screws there. So it's a good time to make sure you have all the pocket holes in the right place. And secondly, for those of you who've been wondering how we get our magic footrest dowel in place, this is also that, uh, that particular step too. I've taken all but one screw out of this part of the stretcher. There's the rest of it. Now we'll take our dowel, which I've cut to just over uh, 45 inches. Press it into one end down here. Slide it just like this into place. Now I can put my screws back in, then cut off the excess with a flush cut saw. As usual, my finishing touches include softening up all the hard edges on the tabletop. You might even want to consider doing the bottom edge as well. Now, no table is any good without a place to sit. The plans give us several options for the design of our bench, uh, but I went for something a little more complicated, a little more upscale. You may not have the tools around your workshop to create what I did, but if you have one of these and one of these, you can create a couple of these. Use the coffee can to draw the lower curve on the bench blank, which is just a two by 12 cut to 16 inches long. The five gallon paint bucket is used for the curves going up each side. Now remember, there are no wrong answers in this quiz. Just center up the curve and go for it. Use a jigsaw to cut out the rough shape. An orbital sander is great for getting rid of surface imperfections and saw marks. Then use the roundover bit to soften those edges. The two ends of the bench are held together by a 48 inch long support board. I've drilled pocket holes at each end to tie it into the bench ends, but you could just as easily install screws from the other side of the end and directly into the support board. Again, no wrong answers here. All right, our last step here is pretty simple. We just have to flip over our assembly and attach our seat board. Now, the seat board is really Nothing more than a two by 12 cut 59 and a half inches long, same length as our table back there. And this is the one place where if you can find a board with a good warp in it, it actually is a benefit. It, it fits better as a seat. As I say, to me, it's more of a, uh, of a farm table than a picnic table, uh, but it's just wordplay at this point. Of course, you know what they say. The difference between a farm table and a picnic table, about $100 in an antique store. We'll see you next time. RealOutdoorLiving.com for more great projects like this one. Wood. It's real.